Central Florida, where 20 years ago, Auto Resume joined the big league. For 20 years at Sebring, men have climbed into cars with the purpose of going fast. For 20 years, an almost forgotten airport has echoed to the fury of cars at speed. As in times past, these men have brought their racing machines from all points of the globe to challenge the track and each other, and their language is a common one. Did we ever change the mixture from uh, preparation? No. We made it richer one time. Yes, but uh, but so. It's the same now. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it's supposed to be that rich? Maybe it's a little too rich. They speak of what they must do to win the 12-hour battle against the track and their opposition. And when it's all said and done. There's only one way. We must go the fastest as possible the whole race. I think the race today is going to be really very hard. Why are we plan to run hard all the way? Uh, I think you'll see a very hard pace for the race. celebrates its 20th anniversary. The year 1970 climaxes two decades that have established the 12 hours of Sebring as the premier auto racing event in North America. To honor the occasion, great names of the past, drivers and cars are on hand to witness this year's event. One of the greatest is Ferrari, which this year has sent three chargers. It was in 1964 when the prancing horse was last seen in victory lane at Sebring. This year, there's a renewed vitality in the Ferrari pits. The cars are lighter and develop close to 400 horsepower, and the drivers more than equal to the 12 hours. Last year's winner, Jackie Ickes, Nino Vaccarella, Ignacio Junior, Mike Parks, and America's premier ace, Mario Andretti, head the list. Arch rival Porsche of Germany returns, not as a factory team, but managed by British racing specialist J. Wire Engineering who won last year's event for Ford. A victory in Daytona's recent 24-hour race and impressive practice times make the two-car wire entry the odds-on favorite. Joe Siffert is teamed with Brian Redmond, and Daytona winners Pedro Rodriguez and Leo Canuna will drive the second car. The two days of practice and qualifying saw Ferrari and Porsche in a seesaw duel for the best time. Finally, late in the second day, the Andretti Merzario Ferrari number 19 took top honors at better than 121 miles per hour, a full five miles an hour faster than last year's record. Fractionally slower came the Porsche number 14 of Sifford and Redmond. In all, 10 cars bettered last year's record. Among them, the Kurt Ahrens Vic Elford Porsche, one half of a potent two-car entry by Porsche Audi. Alfa Romeo was well represented with three spiders. The fastest piloted by Piers Courage and Andrea Dianovic. Matra of France was also at Sebring with two cars, both in the top ten, but giving away horsepower to the Porsches and Ferraris. All around, all American Dan Gurney was teamed with Francois Sever, with Andre Pascarello and Johnny Servos Gavin in the second car. Yes, indeed. Uh, and again, have we uh, got many... Sebring is many races. While the faster sports and sports prototypes duel for the lead, there's always a challenging group of races further back. In the Grand Touring category, a bevy of Corvettes are expected to stir things up. The fastest qualifiers, the number one and two Corvettes, entered by Troy Promotions of Michigan. A welcome addition in the sports prototype group is movie actor Steve McQueen's entry, a 908 Porsche. McQueen, although hobbled by a broken foot, will drive the car with Peter Revson, the well-known road racing star. Their class includes the Matras and Alfa Romeos, an uphill fight to say the least. Through the years, tradition has been a valued treasure at Sebring. The pit straight, the Jaguar Tower, the hairpin curve, 
But times change, and the interest of safety to both spectators and drivers has washed away some landmarks. The warehouse straight and Webster turn have been eliminated, and this year the famous Le Mans start will be no more. Three, two, one. But the tradition that remains is the challenge of 12 hours of racing. The mechanics, the managers, the drivers know of this test. And they're ready. After the race at Daytona, we improved the car a lot and it's going to be really good now. Oh, I think uh, they've uh, done quite a bit of work and de development work on these cars. Uh, Chassis-wise and engine-wise, I think we're a lot better off. It has uh, very good reliability. They told us that drive it as though it's a Grand Prix race. Don't worry too much about the fact that it's a 12-hour race. Just stand on it. You have about 16 cars, which are all basically competitive, and one, any one of which could win the race. Flat out, we're about 7th or 8th fastest overall against a little bit larger engine cars, so. And I'm sure the average speed for the race will be up around the uh, 112 to 14 mile an hour mark for the whole race. Well, I don't know just how fast the Porsches will uh, want to run at the beginning. I think on uh, Siffert's car, we shall definitely challenge the Ferraris. We'll just have to uh, pace ourselves uh, to a reasonable pace, and uh, the only thing I'm afraid that the reasonable pace here today is gonna be very fast. In a moment, the 12 hours of Sebring, fast and furious. It's been that way for 20 years. After a pace lap tour of the 5.2 mile road course, 68 cars are ready for the 20th running of the Sebring 12 hour endurance classic. Andretti in Ferrari number 19 leads the field as the race gets underway. Behind him, Porsche, Ferraris, Alfa Romeo, Mazda, and a variety of road racing machines guaranteed to provide excitement even into the nighttime hours that lie ahead. The red Ferrari 512S leads through the hairpin, followed by Joe Sippert in Porsche number 14. Andretti led from his pole position on the grid, which he earned with a 121.9 mile an hour Sebring lap record. Ten cars bettered last year's qualifying mark, set by Chris Amon in a Ferrari. Trouble back at the hairpin. Two Lola Coupes mix it up. Bob Brown in number 26 continues, but Mike Duty would complete just one lap of the race. Entering the long north-south runway, Andretti opened his lead. Here the cars reach maximum speed, the fastest ones close to 200 miles an hour. Hit straight, lap one, Ferrari number 19. Sibbert's Porsche is next, and already the cars vie for position. In third place, Jackie Ix in Ferrari number 20 has moved ahead of Vic Elford's number 16 Porsche, with Pedro Rodriguez in the second wire engineering Porsche a close fit. flip by the number 60 MGB. The car threw a tire and miraculously the driver Bob Kilpatrick escaped injury. The accident occurred on the short straight between turns one and two and fortunately the tire stops dead without endangering the oncoming cars. Near the end of the first hour the leader's average speed was a fantastic 117 miles an hour highlighted by Sippert's one lap record of 122.265. Sippert enjoyed a brief two laps in the lead. Then Andretti regained it, only to lose it again when the Ferrari pitted for fuel.
Arturo Mazzario is ready for relief. The young upcoming Italian from Milan shared driving chores with Andretti at Daytona and is considered a bright prospect for the future. Normally, this would be a routine stop, but Italian fashion, it becomes almost a comic operetta. While the Ferrari pit gymnastics are going on, all the top-running cars pit for fuel and driver change. Vic Elford in Porsche number 16 led for two laps before giving way to Kurt Ahrens, also giving the lead back to the number 14 Porsche with Brian Redman aboard. <laughs> himself in fifth place. But Lady Luck dealt Portia a cruel blow. Brian Redman limped back into the pits, and the minutes rolled by as the mechanics repaired a faulty electrical system. This unexpected stop dropped the number 14 Portia out of the top 10, a position from which it would never recover. Leo Kanunen led in the sister Portia with Kurt Ahrens also in a Porsche 917, a car length away in second. Rosario worked his way into third, the first of three Ferraris. In fourth place, the Jackie X Peter Shetty Ferrari number 20. In fifth, the Junti Vaccarella number 21. Further back, the fourth of the new line of 12-cylinder Ferrari 512s, entered by a North American racing team, looses it on the tricky chicane. Although much heavier than the factory cars, the number 22 has been kept in contention by Mike Parks and Chuck Parker. In Grand Touring, John Greenwood and Alan Parker lead a string of Corvettes. They're 14th overall, but having as much fun as the front runners. Near the third hour mark, a blown tire dropped Rodriguez from the lead. The Porsche 917 had led for most of the last hour and a half, exchanging it briefly with the Aaron's Alfred Porsche. For the first time in a long time, Ferrari held the first three spots. A surprise to most of the 57,000 who looked on was the fifth place position of the McQueen Revson Porsche 908. The two have done a masterful job keeping the underpowered car contention. Reporter Chris Economaki asked Steve McQueen about his broken foot. I busted it in a motorcycle raid up at Elk Lake Elsinore, the 100 miler. Uh, busted it in six places, and uh, I'd already said I'd drive, so I got the cast on, and we just taped it up. And what about shifting and clutching? It must be pretty difficult. Well, it's uh, a little difficult. I can't use a footrest. Uh, we've had to cut part of it off because I'm five and one-eighth inches across uh, the bottom of my foot, and we've put some sandpaper on the bottom, taped it on so I keep it on the clutch pedal and adjust it. Peter Revson uses too much foot, but regains control and keeps position. The number 33 Alfa Romeo of American Maston Gregory and Hollander Tony Hesmonds also does a turnaround. The Alfa and the McQueen Revson Porsche are having quite a go for fifth. The two cars swapping position all afternoon. Well into the fourth hour, it becomes apparent the Porsche battle is a difficult one. Body repair work, necessitated by the earlier tire mishap, drops the Canunan Rodriguez Porsche four laps behind the leader. In the second hour, the number 17 Porsche swallowed a valve. A short while ago, the number 16 Porsche suffered irreparable damage to the rear suspension when it was involved in an accident. And although still running, the number 14 Porsche underwent repair of the front wheel hubs and is out of contention. The Andretti Merzario 19, entrenched in first, leads the trouble-free Ferrari parade. In a moment, the final chapter, the nighttime hours of Sebring. As day gives way to night, Mario Andretti and Arturo Mazzario have amassed a nine-lap lead. What was a three-Ferrari runaway dropped from two to one. 
Ick Shetty number 20 retired with a broken valve spring, and the number 21 car blew a tire and is undergoing repair to damage suspension. Retirement defeated the Greenwood Barker Grand Touring Corvette, or perhaps it was the dogged pursuit and steady pace of the Tony DiLorenzo Dick Lang Stingray. Racing second in GT for most of the race, their car ran trouble-free and is now first in class. There has been no let-up in the 12-hour marathon. Average speed better than 113 miles per hour. A report is in that the number 14 Porsche is out with a broken up right. And Joe Sifford is now teamed with Rodriguez in the remaining Porsche. Maston Gregory in the Alpha number 33 is in third. Finally repaired, the number 21 Ferrari joins the fray. Running fourth, the number 48 McQueen Revson Porsche. But it's not over. Mario Andretti has brought the lead car into the pits and is examining the underside of the Ferrari. Rosario is helmeted and ready for his stint at the wheel. But the stop is agonizingly long. Ferrari had as much as 12 laps on the second place car. But the fast closing Porsche of Sippert and Rodriguez is cutting into that lead. Out on the track, the field has thinned to 30 cars. Revson has moved his Porsche into third, and the Junti Vaccarella Ferrari is now fourth. Rosario goes out, still in first. Chris Economaki is with Mario Andretti. Getting close to the end, Mario. What's the trouble underneath the back of the car? Well, it's a gearbox. How bad is it? I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't think it's going to finish. What, how many gears are left? Well, not how many gears are left, but there's four, gear, uh, four gears left yet, but uh, it's jumping out of gears and it's making noises, so I don't know. Right. Mario Andretti, concerned about finishing. Concerned he might be. Rosario is running very slow. Revson pits the third place car. The young charger from New York has done the lion's share of the driving and has not taken relief since nightfall. Revson's lap times are eight seconds better than McQueen's. And that says something for McQueen, what with his broken foot. The car is held together. In fact, the mechanics have not had to change tires or brake pads. With this combination, Sebring could have a storybook finish. Revson goes out again for another turn. Approaching the 11th hour, the Porsche closes the gap on the faltering Ferrari. At 9.46, it is dead on the course. There's still an hour of racing left, and Ferrari has come too far to call it quits. It's been decided that Andretti will drive the only Ferrari still in contention. Junti discusses strategy as Andretti waits for the number 21 car. strategy is simple. Overtake the two Porsches and win the race. Ferrari's deficit is better than one lap, and it's doubtful that even Andretti can do it. It wasn't long before Andretti unlapped himself. He is now five miles behind the leader and in pursuit of the second place Revson McQueen car. Twenty minutes from the end, Sifford roared into the pits with more trouble for Porsche. A wheel hub failure, the same problem that occurred on the sister car, has stricken Porsche's hopes of victory. At the same time, Andretti overtook Revson, and once again, Ferrari led. Maston Gregory was one lap down in third. By the time the Porsche was repaired, it was four laps back in fourth. The drama never ceased. With minutes to go, Andretti paid a surprise visit to the pits. 
The McQueen pits were overjoyed, thinking the Ferrari was in trouble. At this point, Andretti's lead was a scant 53 seconds over Revson. But the stop was just for a splash of gas. The minutes were running out, and out of the darkness, one car would emerge the victor. The 12 hours of Sebring was over, and Ferrari had won. For the eighth time in the 20-year history of the 12-hour Enduro, Ferrari took the checkered flag. McQueen Revson was second, Alfa Romeo third, and the surviving wire Porsche fourth. Victory Lane, in a moment. Victory Lane at Sebring. The winning car, Ferrari number 21. Mario Andretti visits the winner's circle for the second time at Sebring. After leading most of the race, his car failed with transmission problems, and Andretti transferred to the winning car, kept in contention throughout the race by original drivers Ignacio Junti and Nino Vaccarello. Time to speak English yet, Mario? Yeah. Congratulations. What a drive. Uh, yes, Everything it pulled a miracle. off? No, but we never lost faith, though. These guys just worked, and... We just tried everything we could, and I guess the Lord will be with us once again. I've never seen you look happier, even in the last night. Oh, I'm telling you, this was the impossible about, dream. What about that last stop? Was it necessary? <laughs> yeah, I ran out of fuel. I thought I was stretch but then uh, the reserve ran out, and I just barely made it in. <laughs> Congratulations again, Ma Mario Andretti. This year's race shattered all records. Average speed better than 107 miles an hour. A fitting climax to 20 years of racing at Sebring.